Hey gang, it's been a little while since I made a video, so I thought I would go ahead and show you a little bit of 10.2 solved by graphing. We were working with the calculators uh, on Friday, just yesterday, and we were using them to just sketch some, some graphs of the parabolas. But now I want to show you how we can actually solve these quadratic equations by graphing. So what I'm looking at is trying to show you the back side of that sheet we were working on on Friday. So instead of just graphing, we're actually going to solve a quadratic equation. This first one's kind of hard to see, but it was the first one on the sheet. It says uh, x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Well, we solved this on Monday. We solved it by factoring. And the way that we did it is we uh, we found it's just normal trinomial, so we find two numbers that multiply to be 4 and add up to be negative 5. So we did a little double bubble here, and we found out two numbers that would work. So they would be like, what, negative 4 and negative 1. And then we take each of those little factors and we set them each equal to 0. So we get x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 1, x minus 4 equals 0, so x equals 4. So we have two answers, 1 and 4. Well, I want to show you how we could use the graphing calculators to find those exact same two answers. So here's what we would do. Instead of, instead of uh, well, let me, let me start it this way. So the problem is x squared minus 5x plus 4. So what I'm going to do in the calculator, I'm going to graph, instead of a 0, I'm going to put y equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. So notice, instead of the, of the 0 in that spot, this was a 0, I'm putting a y. So that means when I go to graph this, this parabola, I'm going to be looking for whenever the y equals 0, because that's actually uh, what I'm trying to solve. I'm trying to figure out what the x's should be so that it's going to create a y value of 0, because I've replaced my 0 with a y. So I get the calculator out. So let me find my calculator. OK. So here's my calculator. I'm going to graph that same function. So I'm going to go x squared minus 5x plus 4. I'm going to do zoom 6 just so I get a normal viewing window. OK, so that's my viewing window. And really, all I need to do is I just need to look for wherever the graph touches the x-axis. So I'm just looking right here, and I'm looking right here. And I can kind of tell, I can zoom in, or I can kind of tell that they cross at 1 and 4, which are exactly the answers that I know are the answers. There's actually a way to do it by having the calculator calculate this. So let me show you. We can do second calc, and we can actually have it find the zeros. That's why they're called zeros, because that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. So when you, you do second, and then you press trace, and it calculate, you go to that, calculate. So left bound, press enter. It just means it's, it's on the left side of wherever the zero is. See the blinking dot? You press enter. And then you have to move your blinking dot so that it's to the right side of wherever the zero is. There's the zero right there. It's to the right side of it. So I press Enter. Guess. Boom. Tells me one of the zeros is 1. That was one of my answers. So then I do second trace again, which is actually calculate. And then I go 0. And then I move it to the other spot where it touches the x-axis. Just make sure it's to the left side of it. So it is. It's still to the left side of it. Press Enter, move it to the right side. Press Enter, want it to guess. Tells me the other zero is right at 4. Again, we totally could tell that it crossed at 1 and 4. But sometimes we can't tell exactly, so we have the calculator uh, calculate it for us. Does that make some sense? So any, uh, any quadratic equation that I want to solve, I can just graph it, and I can see where it crosses the x-axis. So let me go back to that sheet. And let's say we look at the next one. The next one, it says x squared plus 4x plus 3. 
So I go back to my calculator and I go x squared plus 4x plus 3. I graph it. Alright, it looks like it crosses at negative 1 and negative 3 right here at negative 1 and negative 3. So those are probably going to be my answers. I can do second calc, get the zeros, so I can press 0. I just need to be to the left side of one of my zeros. So I'm to the left side. See it's blinking right there. There's the zero right there. It's to the left side of it. Press enter. Move it to it so it's on the right side of it. See it's to the right of the zero. Press enter. Guess. Negative three. Yep, right there. The other one is negative one. So I could do that again. Or I can solve it another way by factoring, of course. So the problem I just graphed was y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. When I graphed it, it crossed at negative 1 and negative 3. So this is a good way to solve the quadratic equation x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, on Monday, when we did this, and last chapter, really, we solved this quadratic equation by factoring. So we look for two numbers that multiply to be 3, and they add up to be 4. So I do a double bubble, come up with two numbers. Numbers are 3 and 1. If I set each of these equal to 0, then I'm going to get the same two answers, of course. So I'm going to get x equals negative 1, x equals negative 3, boom. Those were the two spots where it crossed. We saw from the graph, remember the calculator, right there, one, negative 1, negative 3, same answer. So negative 1, negative 3. So this is a great way to solve quadratic equations. As long as you have a graphing calculator, you can graph it and just see what the zeros are, wherever it crosses the x-axis. Now does that make sense? where the y value is equal to 0, that's going to be, that's going to be the x-axis. Everywhere on this spot, on the x-axis, it has y values that are equal to 0. Okay? Alright, I think that is good enough for this little video.